Did you know there are actually four different ways to use your seam ripper? Which method are you using and is it the best one? Let's find out. Hi, my name's Abby and I help absolute beginners get started sewing their own clothes. So if you'd like help with getting started, you're confused, not sure what to do, I've got a free course down below with everything you need to get started, those first couple steps. And even if you're a little bit more advanced, you still might find a method here that helps make your seam ripping a little easier. So let's jump in. So let's just start with what is a seam ripper? So the seam ripper is to sewing what an eraser is to a pencil, okay? So if you write something with a pencil that you don't like and you wanna change it, you erase it, right? Same thing with a seam ripper. If you sew something incorrectly or you don't like the way that it looked, you use your seam ripper to take out those stitches so you can sew again or sew it differently. Okay? So, really easy, straightforward. That's what it is. When do you use a seam ripper? Now, obviously, you use it when you make a mistake when you're sewing, but I don't want you to think that using a seam ripper is a beginner problem, okay? I have been sewing for 15 plus years and I still use a seam ripper with frequency. It is a common part of sewing, so when it happens to you, don't take it personally, don't take it as a, oh my gosh, I'm bad at sewing because I sewed this thing wrong. No, 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 no. <laughs> it just means that you sewed something wrong, so you're just gonna take it out and try again. There's nothing negative associated about this unless we make that story in our head, okay? You're totally fine to use the seam ripper. It's going to be part of your sewing journey forever, most likely. <laughs> so it's better to, when it happens, take a deep breath. And remember, it's totally normal. And not stress out about it, okay? So we use a seam ripper when we make a mistake, and we just use it to correct it, okay? It means nothing, and it says nothing about your ability to sew. What are the parts of a seam ripper? Now, I wanna be clear about what we're using. So we have the handle, this big blue part. We have the ball, the little red circle. We have the point, this pointy little tip at the end. Don't touch it, it's quite sharp, ow. <laughs> and we have the J curve here. Now, the J curve is really the most important part that we wanna focus on because this is the part that actually is going to cut your thread, okay? So we pull the thread down into this little curve and we push and that's what's going to cut the threads for us. You'll see this in action soon. If you've had your seam ripper for a while or you haven't checked it recently, it's a really good idea to check how sharp it is. Trying to work with a dull seam ripper is going to make this process much harder and it's going to be much more likely that you damage your fabric. So let's check to make sure that our seam rippers are sharp. And to do this, we're just going to take a scrap piece of fabric and our seam ripper, and we're going to take the point and we're going to put it through the fabric, pierce it through to the other side, and then push with our seam ripper. And the fabric should cut easily. We should just have a little bit of push and it should cut right through this. If you find that you're having to push really hard and the fabric's not cutting very easily, your seam ripper is dull and you should probably invest in a new one. Okay, I personally have never checked my seam rippers because I didn't know this was a thing. And so I checked all of mine now that I use in class and oh my gosh, over half of them were dull. <laughs> so I'm glad that I checked this and it's a really good idea for you to do this as well. First seam ripping method we're gonna look at is picking. So first, all of the seam ripping methods, you have to manually seam rip the lock stitch. And the lock stitch is the part at the very beginning and the end where you sew back and forth a couple of times to make sure that your stitches don't come out. If you are not sure what a lock stitch is, check out this video, but we need to take it out manually. So to do this, we take the point of the seam ripper and we just put it under the stitch, but not through the fabric, and we push. And we cut these a couple of these stitches until we remove this part at the end, okay? Now, it's not always possible to get all of it from one side of the fabric, so you can always flip the fabric over like this and seam it from the other side until you get all of that lock stitch removed, okay? 
If you're struggling to get the seam ripper under the thread and not catching the fabric, you might find it easier to hold the seam ripper on its side instead of holding it straight up and down like this. When I hold it like on the side like this, it tends to be a little bit easier to catch just the thread and not have to worry so much about grabbing the fabric. So try both, see which one works better for you. And yeah, that's just another helpful tip that I hope makes this easier. Something to keep in mind is make sure that you're putting the point of the seam ripper and you're pushing it towards the seam allowance. Okay, you don't want to poke towards the bigger part of your fabric because if you do, and if while you're not paying attention, you poke that into your fabric and you poke a hole, then you have a hole in the middle of your project or on the side of your project. But if you're facing the seam allowance and you poke your seam ripper into it and you make a hole, it's just going to be in the seam allowance. No one's ever going to see that, so it's not going to cause any problems. Now again, we want to avoid making holes at all, but if it's going to happen, it's better to happen in the seam allowance. Once that's out, what we're going to do is go and rip out every fifth or sixth stitch. So I'm going to go down, rip, go down, rip, go down, rip. Okay. Then once we make it all the way to the other side, okay, so I ripped all of these. We're going to flip the fabric over and it looks like nothing has changed on this side. So we're just going to grab the tail and we're going to pull it up. And when we do, you'll see that because we've cut the other side in so many little pieces, that when we pull from this side, all those little pieces just get pulled up and out. Easy peasy, okay? So now we just need to manually remove the lock stitch from the other side. And now the last step for this method is to get rid of all these extra little threads that are hanging around now. And to do this, you can just use your hands and pull them off of your fabric. Ta-da! That was the first method. Is that the method that you're currently using? If it is and you love it, let me know down below. And then now let's look at method number two. Method number two, pulling. So it starts the same way. We're going to manually take out the lock stitch. That will be true for all these methods. <laughs> And once we remove the lock stitch, what we're going to do this time is actually pull our two pieces of fabric apart gently. And when we pull those apart, we can actually see the threads going back and forth here, kind of like a ladder. Then we can take our seam ripper, poke it under the rungs of that ladder, and push and cut the threads this way. And once we cut those first couple threads, we tug a little bit more, we see more thread, we cut those. We tug a little bit more, we cut those, and we keep going. Now, the two notes here are again, make sure that you're poking the tip of your seam ripper towards the seam allowance, not towards the middle of your project. And don't pull your fabric too hard. Remember, we don't want to pull and stretch and mess up our fabric, so be gentle with this. Tug it gently until you can see the next couple of threads. It's usually just one or two or three, maybe at a time and rip those and then pull again and go that way. Don't try just pulling this really hard because you might rip your fabric or you might stretch it out. And both of those things are going to mean that your final project have some kind of weirdness looking happening with them, okay? So don't do that, be gentle, <laughs> and then work your way all the way to the end. Now, again, with this method, we have these little mm, threads still we need to clean up. And if you don't like using your hand and going through that's too tedious, you can use a piece of tape. Take your tape and just like rub it across the fabric. Don't dab, that didn't work very well for me, but actually put your tape on the fabric and then rub across it, rub or push or wipe. And you should be able to remove, remove most of these threads really easily. The third method is one that I personally will probably never use because it's just too scary for me. <laughs> and it's probably a method that you've seen all over if you've seen other videos on seam ripping because it is kind of like magic, but let's look at it and you can decide for yourself, okay? So this method works best with harder structured materials. 
So think denim or corduroy, okay? Things that are a little bit harder, not soft, flowy things like silk. So what we're going to do is take our seam where we've sewn and we're going to open it flat. Where we take the two seam allowances and open them and open the project and pull everything apart, okay? Then we're going to take this and actually put it under the presser foot of our sewing machine. Now, we're just putting it here so it's like somebody else is holding the other end for us, okay? We're not actually gonna use a sewing machine, okay? So once that end is set up and in place, and then we're going to treat this side the same way. So we're gonna that seam allowance, we're gonna fold it down to either side of the, what we stitched, pull the project to either side, and then we're going to take our seam ripper and place it with the ball down inside the project and the tip up on the top where we can see it, okay? Then, we're gonna hold our project in tension, so one side of the sewing machine is holding, the other you're holding, and pull it gently so it's tight. And then take your seam ripper, and we're just going to push along this seam. Now, I know this looks like magic, and if you wanna test it and try it out, go for it. Maybe it's really fast and the best method, but the issue that you can run into is, if you're not holding this in tension and you're using a soft or flowy fabric, you can, when you're pushing your seam ripper along, tilt from side to side and put a hole in your fabric. And the biggest problem here is that hole is right on your stitch line, <laughs> which means that you cannot sew this again in that same place. Otherwise, when you open your project, you're gonna have a visible hole from the outside. So you'll have to actually sew further into your project, making it smaller. Now, for some projects, this might be okay. For others, it won't be. And for me, the risk of putting a hole in my fabric on the seam line, too scary, the stakes are too high, I can't do it. <laughs> but if you're working with heavier fabrics like denim and jean and a lot of stuff like that, you might find this is a very fast, easy method. And maybe you're a little bit braver than I am. <laughs> oh, and we still have some of those pesky little threads hanging around. And another option, if you didn't like the tape and you didn't like using your hands, you can also use a lint roller. You take the lint roller and roll it across this. And that should also help remove these threads. Method number four is gathering. Okay, this is actually my preferred method. I use it 90% of the time and it is amazing because you end up with almost none of those pesky little threads that you have to actually pull out and clean up afterward. Okay, so for this method, what we're going to do is remove the lock stitch like we always do. <laughs> and then we're going to remove the first five to eight stitches, but we don't wanna cut them. What we actually want to do is pull them out using the back of the seam ripper, not the J-curve. That way we create a tail. So you'll see that when I'm putting this, the tip under the stitch, I'm pulling away using the back of the seam ripper. So I'm just pulling this thread out. I'm not cutting it, okay? Because I need this little tail so I can hold on to it in the next step, okay? Now that we have a tail, I'm going to hold the tail in one hand. And then I'm going to pinch the stitch line gently with my other hand. And I'm going to pull them in opposite directions. And what's gonna happen is the tail will get a little bit longer and the stitch line will start to gather up. Now, explaining this on camera is one thing, but you really should try this. So grab a piece of fabric, put some stitches in it, and try this on your own. And this is also a really common technique that you'll see in lots of videos when you have a gathered skirt or you need to gather in sleeves for puffy sleeves. So you'll be able to use this technique again. But for now, we're not gathering, we're just gonna keep pulling this gently and slowly because if you try to go too fast, you're probably gonna end up popping the thread. So let's talk about what happens if you pop the thread. So here it is, I broke it. Now I'm just going to keep pulling my tail and you'll see that it comes out 
And now I have this big empty space where I've already taken out all the stitches on one side. When I flip the fabric over, we see we still have that thread, but if I move it, it's just a tail now. It's not actually stitched down to the fabric. So now I can grab this tail and keep gathering all the way to my lock stitch. Now, you can't gather off a lock stitch. It's locked. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop the thread right here next to the lock stitch and pull this out and then manually remove the lock stitch. And look, it's completely taken out and there's none of those little pieces of thread that we have to go through and take out. Everything is already nice and clean. Oh, it's my favorite. <laughs> So which method have you been using? Have you been picking, pulling, ripping, or gathering? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, let me know any other sewing questions that you have. I really wanna make sure that everybody else has a much smoother sewing journey than I did. Mine was rough. <laughs> if you'd like to hear about how I got started sewing, you can check it out here. But I really just want to make sure that you enjoy sewing and you're proud of the clothes that you're making. So if there's any questions I can answer for you, let me know down below. If you're brand new, check out down below. I have free courses to help you get started, classes to help you make more progress. Just anything I can help you with, let me know. <laughs> and in the meantime, happy sewing.